Okay, so the recording is now active. So today we are going to explore how to model uh, an object like this. So this is uh, something which I tried to research and develop the modeling workflow uh, yesterday. So today I will come up with the workflow right to model things like the actual mesh itself. Now normally right, if you want to avoid modeling this kind of uh, mesh like uh, structure, you can use a texture map to do that. But the texture map can only go so far. So in the end, right, um, ideally, you should model out the physical mesh itself. So I'll show you how to get the mesh to bend until to this shape. And also model the rest of the parts, which actually in reality, right, these, like the tripod and the mic body itself, is uh, relatively simple. So the mic that we are going to try to attempt to model today is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB mic. Uh, it presents some features, right, that will allow us to hide things like the mesh seam around here okay so I'm, i'll be using this image as a guide right to model uh mic right that is similar to this but not 100 uh, percent exactly like this one so if you want to model it exactly like uh, this mic that you see here then i recommend that you download the image and then bring it into maya but i'm going to just uh, model freestyle here so i'll start with a new scene here <coughs> And we'll start by modeling the mesh structure first, right? So I'll start off by creating a cube. And uh, the cube is where we will start to create the mesh structure. So I will start off by first getting rid most of the cube because I only need one of the faces here. So I'll go over the face section mode, select all the faces except one, and then delete them away. I only need one of the face. You can use the mesh itself. Um, you can use a plain mesh by itself, uh, that'll be the same. So right now I switch over to vertex mode, then press W to move, then holding down to X, right, and move the, uh, to snap it into the center of the grid, the origin. Then I'll use my face mode and I'll turn on my snapping, my grid snap here. Then going to the front view, right, while the face is selected, right, I'm going to hold down to shift, hold down to shift and then move and extrude at the same time. And I'm going to create a structure like this. Okay, maybe I want to go down a little bit more. Let me undo that one. So shift and then go down maybe to this section like that. Yeah, I want to make sure that the, the mount that I move right is, is the same. Like I started from the center here. So it goes up one, two units. So for this part here, right, I need to go make it go down uh, two units as well. So how far between them, uh, I think Let's see, maybe three units or maybe four units. I think four units so that I can maintain the thickness. Yeah, four units will be fine. Then you want to create something that is evenly spaced. So with the snap on, right, it will be a little bit easier. So basically, we just want to create one wire element first. Okay, so this one, right, I'm creating is slightly uh, bigger and looser. Okay, so I want to create an even number, one, two, three, four, four. I'll start with four first, and okay, maybe I will just do one more. Okay, and then finally, right, I will get rid of this uh, faces here. So basically, I want to create this shape that looks like this, so that later on when I uh, duplicate special, right, I can have a continuous wire that goes all the way across. Okay, next, I want to select all of these faces and move it back right until it's lined up with the grid here like this okay with the center point lined up like that okay let me see one two one two yeah i just want to check that they are spaced evenly so right now we created this structure and it's just one single element of the wire if i press number three you will see that we start to create this wavy pattern already okay and the end of the face right here that was extruded out, you want to select this face, okay? I'll go back to level one and then delete it away. So when I press number three, this is what you should get. And from this single element alone, right, I should be able to create a uh, wire mesh structure. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to level one. And I think this time I wanna scale this down a little bit. Uh, okay, on second thought, I'm gonna leave it as it is for now. Okay, I'm going to leave it at this scale. It will, will just make my, what I call it, duplicate special a little bit easy. So I'm going to duplicate maybe about 20, 20 uh, elements of this. Now I have to decide how much distance right should I move from here to here. 
So to help me, I'm going to create something called an empty. So go and create an empty, or sorry, a locator. All right, I'm using the term from another software. So create a locator while with the snap on, right? Just move this unit until you reach to the end here. Go over to your channel box and see how much has it moved. It has translated 24 Maya units. So that means for this duplicate, right, we have to um, move it along the x-axis 24 times if you want to create a continuous stream. So I'm going to use uh, Edit Duplicate Special. Along the x-axis, 24 units. We're going to create an instance. And then copies, maybe I'll use, I'll create 10 copies first and I'll see how it goes. And then create a duplicate special. And now we have 10 copies of this, right, extended all the way. I think this is, should be sufficient for us to create a mesh along the side later on. Okay, so now that we have this uh, piece, we have to join all of them together. So go and select all the mesh objects, select all of them, right, except the locator and then go and mesh combine. So once they are combined together, the next thing you want to do is to make sure that the ends are merged together. If you go over to, if you press number three, you notice that at the end of it, right, it's still not merged together, so you end up with a very hard point looking like that. So to fix that, you just need to go over to vertex mode, all right, and then select all the vertices, grab and select all the vertices, right, and then apply and merge. So shift right mouse click, merge vertices, and merge. We're going to merge by distance. And when you hit merge, okay, you can see now the sharp point disappears. Right? The end of the vertices have joined. Right, so now we have one wire section. From this wire section, right, we can start to weave our wire mesh. So let's go over to the top. And we are going to create the uh, alternating weave section. All right, so I'm going to select one piece first. And holding down the shift, I want to duplicate another piece. Then with the snap on, right? With the snap on, I need to offset this uh, about maybe... Okay, let's go to the front view. Okay. Then with the snap on, you just need to offset in such a way that right now they are uh, opposing each other like that. You see this? All right, so now we've got two. We're going to select these two, right? And I think the spacing is a bit too, too wide. Let me just put it closer a bit. Okay, let me see top view, right? I just want to count how many uh, units, right, per, per span. Okay, so it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, Okay, I think about, just now I moved how many units there, okay, let's see. Okay, this one you will have to experiment uh, yourself, like how much should you move. Okay, let me just go to the top view and then check again. I just want to do an even number, okay, maybe one, two, three, four, four units. Right, because that is the number of units, right, that I... Uh, push between each span. Okay, four units should be good. All right, so now I'm going, to, I'm going to select these two and mesh combine them together. Now, every time you combine a mesh together, right, you generate all these transform nodes in the outliner. So, to get rid of them, first you need to delete away the edit history. Then you can select the outliners and safely delete them away, or rather the transform nodes and delete them away. <coughs> so, you must remember to delete away the history. Otherwise, if you delete away the transform nodes, the duplicated objects will disappear. <clears throat> so I've combined these two together now. Now I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to evenly duplicate them, holding down the clone tool and just make sure that they are evenly spaced. So I'm going to create another few sets, holding down the shift and then with the snap on, just bring it down like that. Okay, so now I have this a bunch of wires going down like this. So continue. I'm going to I'm going to continue until I have a large swath of uh, wires. Okay, make sure that they are evenly spaced. Okay, this is very important. Otherwise, the uh, wire section will not work. Okay, maybe a few more. So that we have enough for the sides of the microphone. 
Now, you can also use the what, duplicate special and then mesh combine them later. Uh, that is perfectly fine as well. All right, I think this should be sufficient uh, to form the cage of the uh, microphone. So I'm going to select all of these and mesh combine them again. And again, you can see that I generated all these nodes. So delete away the history and then all the nodes should disappear. Okay, next, I'm going to duplicate this entire piece by holding down the shift and then clone another section out like that. And here comes the interesting part because if I rotate this 90 degrees, holding down the J, 90 degrees, okay, and then as you move over the mesh, you can see we start to have our weave. See that? Beautiful, nice looking weave. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to uh, create a couple of the weaves, uh, okay, not just one. Or if you can, let me just do one section here first. The wire weave, one section here. And then I will uh, maybe go to face section mode. And I will delete away these sections. I don't need all these sections. I'm going to select all these faces here and delete them away. Okay, and then this piece here, I'm going to center the pivot. Holding down the shift and clone. And continue to duplicate until I finish the weave. All right, perfect. Now I, you can see that I have a very nice uh, structure, which I'm going to. I'm gonna clean up this area here. Go to face selection mode. Double click, double click, shift, double click, right, to add on to the selection. We don't need these faces here, and then delete away. Okay, so now we have our weave. And from this weave alone, right, we can uh, start to create the side of our microphone. So before we do that, let's join all these piece, uh, pieces together. Now, I don't need the locator anymore. Let me delete them away. Or delete it away. Select four of these pieces, then go and mesh combine. And then uh, delete history, and then we are back to the mesh. So we'll call this the main uh, mesh. I'm going to keep another piece. I'm going to duplicate another piece, right, which we are going to use for the top of our microphone later on. But for this one, I'm going to use the band modifier, right, to create the side of the microphone. So go over to deform, go over to nonlinear, then apply a band uh, modifier, or rather a band uh, deformer. Okay, so. You can click on the envelope and then you can apply the curvature, but later you will see that it will not bend uh, in the correct axis. Okay, I'm going to bend it to 180 uh, value first. Now, to fix this, uh, there are a couple of things you can do. You can select the bend modifier or the bend, uh, <coughs> the bend tool, the bend handle, and then you can try to rotate it first. I'll try to rotate it along the, uh, the y-axis first. The y-axis here. I'm going to rotate it this way 90 degrees okay it doesn't seem to be affecting it okay but uh we're gonna try to rotate it along the uh okay let me let me uh, put zero first maybe i'll try the x-axis 90 degrees okay so it end up like this okay that's fine now i'm gonna rotate along the z-axis and then type 90 degrees and now you can see we are rotating it um in this angle but actually i want it to rotate uh or rather, I want it to bend this way instead. All right, so that means I have to now select along the y-axis. Then maybe I put the 90 degrees like that. Okay, still, it's not, still not rotating the right way that I want. Okay, let me undo that. Okay, actually, I will have to manually rotate it this way. Yeah. So it's along the x-axis. So the x actually should be zero. <laughs> so the angle that I should be rotating is the z-axis. Okay, at least from my point of view here. All right, so we'll come up to this stage. you notice that now there's a gap here that we will have to try to uh, connect. Okay, so we can fix that by going over to the band value. And we can increase this value, right, so that both ends here, okay, both ends here and here will touch. Okay? So let me just see how much, okay, how much that I need to bend in some more. Okay, so I will just increase the value, the curvature slowly. Okay, maybe 182. Okay, then 183. 
Okay, and now they're touching. Okay, but you can see that it's overlapping slightly. Uh, maybe so 182.5. Okay, maybe 182.8. So you need to maybe adjust this value. Okay, 0.8 is very, very close. Maybe 0.7. Okay, 0.75. So <laughs> keep on adding the value. Okay, perfect. Now you can see the ends are touching each other. So we can now finish this uh, loop okay, by deleting away the history. Delete all by type history. So that now this uh, deformation is permanent. But we still have this sharp edge here. So again, if you remember, we can use the merge by distance. Okay, but you can see that there's still a very tiny gap over here. But let, let's try our luck here. So go over to vertex mode. Then go over to the front view. And let's go over to the problem area where we have the sharp point here. Yeah. So we're going to choose only the vertices that are connecting. So go and drag the box over the vertices that are supposed to be connecting, which are these two over here. And let's see any other points. No, it seems that it's only the bottom here. Then we're going to go over to... Uh, Shift, right mouse click over the vertices, merge, and then use the merge by distance. And we are going to try uh, increasing the distance a little bit. Then I'm going to try merge. Okay, it's not, uh, is it working? Yes, it works. Perfect. Right now we have a beautiful continuous uh, cage that runs all across. And this will be the, basically the cage structure. Let me undo that. Let me center the pivot also. Center the pivot. So it's right, perfect in the center. Then I'm going to hold down J and then rotate this 90 degrees. And this will be perfect for our uh, microphone cage. Now, what about the top here? Now, the, the top, right, we definitely need to cover the top with a circular portion. Now, for the circular portion, right, I'm just going to use a cylinder to boolean a section here and then put on top. All right. So for the mesh itself, let's see. <laughs> I can choose to actually make this a little bit bigger, but... I think I will just, let me just see whether I can cover the top first. Actually, almost just nice. Yeah. Uh, let's just see. Okay, barely. Okay, I barely cover the top. So, okay, I think, I think I can work with this. This is fine. Okay, so I will need to now create a cylinder that will just remove this top. Uh, or rather, remove the rest of the section. So, I'm going to create a cylinder. And I will have to align this cylinder right to this uh, this tube right now. Now I'm gonna I have to scale this cylinder way bigger. Select the cylinder and then select this wire mesh. Then go to modify and use the align tool, and then use it to align both to the center, like that. Okay. So right now this is in the center. Perfect. So I will oops just undo that. I only want to move the cylinder up and scale it until it overlaps the cage then if we go to the top view yeah it should be large enough until it overlaps this uh, mesh object then we're going to use boolean right to remove this section the rest of the section around here so select these two items go to mesh and boolean and we try intersection and bingo we created our circular piece so for this circular piece i need to modify it slightly again I'm going to grab the center uh, faces right, and try to pull it down slightly. So I'm going to use the soft selection or the, um, the soft selection tool right, to help me. So how do I use that? So first, let me go to vertex mode and go to the top view. Now, I'm going to try to select the vertices in the center first and gradually right, use the shift plus right, to increase the section. <laughs> okay, apparently it doesn't increase the section uh, nicely. So I'm going to try to use another selection method. Let me see whether I can use the uh, lasso tool. Okay, probably lasso tool, right, it's not very precise. I'm trying to select, right, the inner part of this so that I create a cent center selection. Okay, I'm going to try my best, right, to select until only the center portion of the vertices are selected. Okay, this is not a very precise way. Uh, ideally, right, if I have a... Let me see whether I have a circular lasso tool. No? I, don't, I don't think I have one. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, so I think this is the best I can do. 
So I will now do a select invert. Okay. I really want to select this, the uh, what the vertices at the edge here. Then I will, I'm going to press B to turn on soft selection. Okay, and then holding down to B and then uh, reduce the influence. Okay, because what I wanted to do is to create this uh, band that goes down. Right now the influence is a little bit too strong. Let me press number three to see what it looks like. Yeah, I just want to create this sort of a, a band downwards. Okay, right now the influence is way too strong. Let me undo that. I don't like, I don't like what I'm seeing. Okay, I want to try to uh, use another way to select the ends. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? I think ideally, right, I just wanted to select the edge here. Okay, I think I have to manually do that. I will just slowly, right, go to the edge of the wires, right, and then just select the edges here like that. Okay, this is going to be a bit tedious, but um, I think this is the only way that I can do it. Okay, I think these right should be removed later on. Okay, I only want to select the uh, wires at the fringes later on. Okay, you understand why I need to do this later? Because I just need to create that band that goes down. Okay, if you, even if you don't select all of them, it's fine. You just need to select the, the edges. Okay, I'm trying to pan around here. Okay, I keep pressing the wrong keys. Okay, you need to hold down the shift uh, when you are shift and then left mouse click to drag and select the edge. <laughs> so the earlier methods that I did didn't work very well. Okay, I think, yeah, we are, we are in a much better position now. All right, now we can uh, press B to turn on the soft selection. Okay, good. Then we're going to perspective view. And then we're going to hold down the B and then just increase the influence slightly. Then we can pull down the mesh. Yes, this is what, what I wanted. Just pull down a bit slightly first, then holding down to B and middle mouse and increase the selection slightly a bit more. And then pull down a little bit more. Okay, right now, actually, let me undo that. It should be the other way around. Holding down the B, and then uh, reduce the influence. And then just pull down a little bit. Okay, I think I think I can get away with this for now. Okay, but ideally, right, I want to select more of this, right, so that I can create the cap. Right, so anyway, I think I'll stop at this. Uh, I'm going to bring the cap down close to the uh, microphone edge like that. Because later on, if you look at the design, right, I'll be using this uh, piece here to hide that edge. Okay, let me just save. I have not saved my file, which is not a good thing. My save my scene. Okay, and then I will now I can uh, select both of these and let me just delete the way the history for this one. Uh, center the pivot. Okay. <coughs> Send it to pivot for this one. Now both of these, right, I can now scale them down. And then freeze the transformation. Freeze transformation and transformation. Okay, I'm gonna move in, move all of them back to the origin. And we can start to model the rest of the microphone, which is much, much easier and it shouldn't take too much time. So we'll start off with the cylinder first for the microphone body. And then we're just gonna push it up right until the cylinder is embedded uh, onto the mic. Now, <coughs> we need to select two flat faces on the side so that we can uh, pull out the supporting cage right for the top of the rim here and to do that right we need to rotate the cylinder so that the flat face right is pointing towards the axis 
So I'm going to go to rotate and then just rotate this until you can see the flat faces are now pointing towards the sides. This just makes the extrusion of the faces a little bit easier for me. Uh, let me just see how much did I rotate. I think I rotate along the axis by 10 degrees or it's close to 10 degrees. Minus 10. Okay, minus 10, that doesn't seem to work. You can see that this part is still tilted a little bit. So I think I had to eyeball this. So the value is actually about uh, 9 point, minus 9.012. Okay, fine. I think I'll, I can live with this. And then I'll freeze the transformation. So everything is reset back to 1. Okay, so with the faces right now pointing at the axis, right, I should be able to pull out the section to build this, this portion out. Okay. All right, so let's do that. Now, before I do that, let's duplicate another cylinder, the same cylinder, just uh, duplicate it up. And this will be our supporting ring that hides the, the top part of this microphone like that. Okay, so we will, we will uh, build the support, supporting ring first by first selecting the outer edges, then select inverse, and delete away the internal faces like that. Then selecting all the faces again, go and extrude it, and gonna extrude it inwards. Okay, so that we have this face looking like that. Okay, if it looks black, it doesn't matter because we can go over to object mode. Then go and mesh display and then reverse this. Okay, so now we have our spotting ring, and then I think the cap right, uh, we can bring this down so that it is merged within. Okay, I think I need the spotting ring to be slightly bigger. So I'll just scale it up uniformly. So to hide the uh, wires. So now the wires are now embedded in this. Now I want to subdivide this. So select the uh, upper faces and the bottom faces. Shift select, then go to the adjacent face, double click. Then shift right mouse click, about, apply a bevel face, give it about two segments. Okay, maybe three segments and then adjust a the fraction because we want this to subdivide nicely into this nice ring like that. Okay. Okay, now, actually, I should, should I sub? Yeah, never mind. I'll, I subdivided this uh, a bit too soon, but anyway, <laughs> I think I can, can manage with this. Uh, let's see, because I'll be connecting it to the bottom here. So earlier on, I used how many subdivisions? Okay, maybe I will, I'll undo it first. Undo the bevel first. Okay, I'll come and do the bevel later. Undo the bevel because I need to connect it to the bottom portion here. So I'm going to select the outer face and then I'm going to extrude it out. So now I have the same number of faces, right, which I can connect to the top. Okay, I'm going to select this object here and scale it up slightly also non-uniformly until it's about the same diameter of this so remember this cylinder was originally created from this and then when I extruded right right now we have the same number of faces that are pointing downwards here so I want to connect right to the sides so remember I want to choose two sides here and connect it down so I think for this top Face, right. I'm going to scale it up so that it's about the same size as the, as the bottom cylinder. Okay, so now I can go and uh, combine these two together. So mesh combine. Alright, and then I want to make sure I select the correct faces. I'm going to go to the top view and I'll just temporarily select these faces here first. So I want to know where are the... Yeah, okay, so I need to combine this face or and this face here. Yeah, then we apply a bridge and it should con uh, connect down nicely. Now we're going to look for the uh, perfect opposite, which is this face and this face. All right, and then we're going to apply the bridge again. Sh oops, undo that. Okay, shift right mouse click and then bridge the face. Then we have now basically created the. Uh, the faces around or rather we have created this connecting edge all right now we're going to refine this we're going to apply a bevel 
we'll start with the top face here then I'm gonna bevel it and give it about uh, three segments and then this face loop right you can see we can also bevel it also three segments like that then I'm gonna do, the, uh, do it to the same to the other side select this face loop right see select one face adjacent face double click then apply the bevel as well give it about three segments okay remember when you uh, when you've done this right you can see that now we created some multiple uh, faces here we can fix the topology by selecting these two opposing components and then we can connect them okay just to make them become uh, four-sided faces okay and we want to insert maybe one edge loop here one edge loop here and then one edge loop here Okay, this is just to fix the topology and then connect uh, connect the components okay now that i think of it right i should have maybe use an even number because right now i created a multi-sided face around here uh let's see well i can fix it by selecting these two here and then connect the components okay so that uh, makes it into a four-sided face okay now this this point here these two connect and then these two connect then insert two edge loops using multi-cut one here one here and then these two vertices connect connect okay so right now everything is four-sided so this is important because we need to be able to subdivide this. Okay, we've got a three-sided faces here and then we don't have a supporting edge loop around here. So after subdivisions, right, it gives us this weird uh, webbing look. So, but if you feel that, hey, this is actually doesn't look too bad, <laughs> you, can want to keep, you might want to keep this. But I don't like that because I need a supporting edge loop right about here. So I'll just insert one more edge loop here and one more edge loop at the bottom here. Okay, and we'll do it to the other side as well. One edge loop here, and then one more edge loop here. Okay, so if I press number three now, yeah, so now the subdivided uh, microphone looks good. So the bottom part here, I will apply a, well, not a bevel yet, because we're going to extrude this out to form the slightly tapered uh, bottom uh, of the typical microphones uh, designs here like that so I will go and press uh, go to vertex mode select the central vertex holding down the control right mouse click convert it to faces then shift full stop to increase selection so that we can use scale 2 to scale this down slightly so that it has a slight taper move this down a bit because I think the mic body is slightly bigger okay, maybe I need to scale this up slightly then extrude again to form another segment okay and then press G again to repeat last command which is to extrude another portion and finally this one I'll just taper it down slightly so now we have the mic body now with the I'm gonna select the edge loop here and then I'm gonna apply a bevel maybe this one I'll just use two segments okay so right now the basic shape of the mic is done like if you want to do things like adding a volume uh, or a switch or a button in front right you just stick a cylinder uh, in front of this now we need to create the in inner parts of the microphone so we start by creating a cylinder again uh, we want to create the diaphragm of the microphone so we're going to scale this up flatten this then I will select the internal faces again I'm gonna just use select the inner vertices holding down to control right mouse click to faces to faces then I will extrude control E and offset them inwards okay right now I'm doing on both sides huh this is just to be a bit more efficient then after that I will extrude again control E to extrude 
right and now with the two faces selected right I can use the scale to press R and then scale it inwards like that see now both both sides right have this sort of like this fake uh, diaphragm look now in order for it to keep its shape while subdivided I need to select all the corners or the edges like this all the edges by holding down the shift and selecting like that then I'm gonna apply bevel throughout to create a hard edge okay, maybe two segments should be good enough And then of course we need to have the 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 what the post right so that let me see where's the front view i'm going to set these two faces right to act as the post of the microphone so extrude this face press w okay instead of using the normal arrows uh, manipulator and pull out the post just i'll pull out a small section first i'm going to turn on my snapping here then scale this down slightly then Control E again, then press W to move, and then extrude out. I'm going to use scale to flatten this, and then delete away the faces because nobody is going to see them. Then use my scale to scale it down so that I have my diaphragm, which I can put into the microphone. Holding down the J to rotate, snap rotate, <coughs> then grab this and then put it inside. Okay, so if you need this to be a little bit bigger, you can just scale this up a little bit more. So we have a nice looking diaphragm that is sitting inside. So this one will be the mic diaphragm. Okay, I think this is the correct spelling. Alright, so we have the mic diaphragm now. Uh, now we want to put this on a uh, tripod. Okay, or a simple tripod. So for the tripod, right, we just need to select a couple of faces at the bottom here. And we're going to extrude. So first, I need to go to my top view and ensure that the faces that are select, right? Okay, actually, I should not select two. I think one of the faces should be enough because one of the faces is already pointing to the axis here like that. So that's good. I'm going to use quick extrude, holding down the shift and extrude one small section, then extrude another section. This extra section, right, is to act as the edge loop, right, to hold the shape when this thing is subdivided like that. All right, so I'm going to... Uh, flatten this okay and then extrude again extrude another section and then after that I will hold down shift to extrude another section so that I can create the sort of like the pivoting point right and then finally this part here extrude one more section scale this downwards like that so now I've got this pivot point which I can, if I press number three right now, it should, uh, it doesn't look very, uh, very strong looking here because of, I need an extra edge loop around here. So I'm gonna double click, select all these edges. Double click, double click, not this one. Yeah, that runs across here. Then I'm gonna apply a bevel. Yeah, I think one should be good enough. This will give me a uh, supporting edge loop right, to create this shape here. So if I go to the right view, go over to vertex mode. Okay, I will start to reshape this a little bit so that it looks a, a little bit rounder. Now for this, right, this is a multi-sided face. You can go and reflow them by uh, inserting edge loop, which I think I'll do that. Okay, just a good habit to have. I will just uh, use the connect components, select these two, and connect it. And then do the same for the bottom here. Select these components, and then connect it. And then what about this two here? So we're going to insert one edge loop right about here. Then connect and connect. Not exactly the, the most efficient way, but I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. And then this, these two here, you can connect them. And these two here, we can connect them. And finally, we need one more edge loop here so that we can connect them. Now, let's use our modeling tools and this uh, target well so we can 
no, actually not target well. We have to use the connect tool again. So let's press Q to go to select. Shift right mouse click, use connect two. No, sorry. Select these two vertices and then connect. Yeah, I lost my train of train of thought earlier on. So connect. Alright, everything nice and four sided. So if I press number three, okay, there shouldn't be any weird uh topology issues anymore. Everything has been converted into four-sided faces. All right, so now we can do our tripod. So we will create another cylinder. So you can see there's a lot of cylinder being used in this project. And we're going to scale this up and we're just going to overlap this uh, so that it will appear to be connected. And if you want to make this look a little bit fancier, you can select the top vertices and scale it down. Okay, like that, and maybe select the top faces, select the center vertex here, control, right mouse click, sorry, control, right mouse click to faces the faces, then extrude another portion here, so that it overlaps, then I can scale this down slightly like that. And as for the, uh, the bottom faces, again, go to... Uh, use selection conversion, select the vertex, the bottom vertex, holding down the control, right mouse click to faces the faces, uh, and then just move this up slightly, then extrude the face, okay, and this one happens to be flaring out slightly, so I'll just flare out slightly, then use the quick extrude method with the move, I just extrude another portion, then extrude another portion using scale to scale this down. Okay, so I'm actually looking at my own desktop mic as a reference right now. So I just want to uh, keep this fast. Now for the rest of the details, I think I don't want to keep this uh, video too long. So I'll select the edge here, all the edges, holding down the shift, double click, shift, double click. And you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to apply a bevel and just reduce the fraction so that later if I subdivide this, it will maintain its shape. Okay, then now I want to create the tripod legs. Now we have some shading issue here, I think uh, from my inserting of edge loop. So if you see this weird shading issue going on, you just apply a mesh display, soften hardened edges, and it should get rid of that problem. All right. So uh, creating the legs are, again, cylinder. I'm going to pull out the cylinder here, then scale it up. Uh, I'm not even going to use the channel of values here. Um, and non-uniform scale, make it a little bit thicker. Make the legs a little bit longer. Okay, and then insert one edge loop here. A couple of edge loops actually. And then one more edge loop here. Then select the faces here until the loop is selected. Then using scale, right, holding down the shift. Right, holding down the shift, uh, then we can extrude and scale at the same time. Okay, while the faces are still being selected, we can apply a bevel, then give it a couple of segments. So this will create the, uh, the rubber padding on the foot. Then uh, we're going to go to the uh, right view in this case. Um, go to object mode, freeze transformation, delete history, freeze transformation, and then we're going to press uh, W and press D and have the pivot point rest on top here. Okay, and then press D again to get out of the pivot point. Then press W to move, move it down to the bottom of the uh, tripod here. Press E to rotate. Now go to the top view and we check the angle first. Okay, this is fine. So I have to go to the right view here. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just rotate this until it is a reasonable angle. Okay, you can eyeball this. Okay, this one, how, what is the angle here? Uh, okay, let's give it 60, de no, uh, rotate, 60 degrees, okay, minus 60. Alright, so next, we are going to go over to the top view, select the one of the single legs, right, and then we're going to temporarily put the pivot point here, so press D, then move the pivot point until it's at the center of this circular portion here, press D to get out of it. Then we're going to hold down the shift while rotate is on. Shift, rotate, and then we can clone another uh, leg. So if you divide 
360 by 3, right? The angle should be 120 degrees. So 120 degrees plus another 120 degrees, that'll be 240. So I'm gonna hold down the shift and rotate again. So this one should rotate 240 degrees. You can manually enter the value here, 240. So now we have our tripod. Okay, the legs looks a bit gigantic right now. So not an issue, we can select all of these and we can use the scale, right, to scale them uniformly inwards. All right, so the legs uh, don't appear too big. All right. Okay, great. So now I can parent the legs to this section here, P. So it's parented. And then this microphone body, I'm going to parent it to this tripod. The wire mesh, okay, which you can keep it separate or you can just combine all of these together. I'm going to parent it to this uh, microphone body. And then finally, the diaphragm, uh, shift select the body and then parent it. So the main object here is the tripod, which you can move it around. Now, I will not demonstrate how to model the things like the cable or anything like that. But uh, things like if you want to adjust the microphone, of course, you want to change the pivot point right down to here. So that if you feel like adjusting the angle of the microphone, you can do that. All right. Now for the cable, um, I'll leave that to you all. And you can change the position on the mic also. Okay, I'm sort of cheating here. I didn't create the slot here and all that. But in the interest of keeping the the video short, which I think is quite long already, uh, I will end the video very soon. Uh, let me just delete away this, do some cleanup, delete away the history, freeze the transformation. Same for the feet. Okay, delete. Feet, I'm just going to delete away the history. I, um, I think I froze the transformation already. Okay, so that means this is permanent. Okay, that's fine. Okay, now I will scale this down. Then put it onto the ground floor level. And now we have another brand new mic. Okay, for the rest of the portions, uh, like uh, the wire, the cables and everything, or even the buttons and switches, I think it's quite straightforward. You can model... Uh, can use the extrude method for the uh, using the nerves nerve surfaces extrude the cross section to create the wire. So I will not demonstrate that. Uh, I'll leave that for you guys to figure out. All right. So that is the my way at least to model uh, this type of microphone. So I'll end the video now.